I know I installed it on one of these drives. I can't remember which one, damn it. I really hope it wasn't this one that I decided to use. Anyways, in this video, I'm gonna be taking through how you can take old PC parts and make a budget NAS build. Not only that, but I'll also show you what other stuff you can do with old hardware. I'm gonna be using an i5-650, eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and no onboard graphics. So I am gonna be using a modern case for this build. It's the only case that I have laying around, but it also showcases the fact that you can actually retrofit a new case to cram in as many hard drives as I can into this case. The great thing is it's a blank canvas and I have loads of space to work with so I can customize as much as I want. I do also have this old SAS module, but it's too big to fit into the case and also it's really decrepit and old. So I'm taking the PCB board out of this and I'm gonna be chucking the rest of it away, including the fans because they are super noisy. So the SAS PCB board needs to go somewhere, right? The next best thing was for me to do some 3D printing and create a little housing for this baby to sit in. And I also needed to make sure it had a cover so you don't get electrocution fingers every time you're taking on and off the hard drives. And the moment of truth, it fits like a glove, look at that. So happy with that and it was just held on with a couple of screws. Next up, I'm going to be mounting this on top of the case. And of course, I wanna make sure that it's perfectly aligned. So using a little blue masking tape to mask it off and uh, see where it should sit. Now with the top of the case all marked up and I'm pretty sure where everything's gonna be sitting, it is now time to do a little bit of cutting. So let's get onto that now. Just a shout out to everyone I haven't monetized yet and I am standing at 604 subscribers as we speak. So it would help me massively if you were subscribed, if you like this content and if not, not to worry. Either way, please do what you feel is right. Thank you. That was a lot more dust than I was expecting. Um, so after I'd done that, it was a simple case of hoovering it all up. And I yes, I did use a plastic sheet inside so I didn't get all that dust all over my components. Once that was done, I just did a quick test fit just to make sure I still had access to all of the connectors on the bottom of the caddy and I could still access them, which was good. And then I wanted to make sure it was all marked up so that it didn't look like I was half drunk placing it and drilling it on top of the case. So with this gaping hole that I created on the top of the case, I now have access to all of the ports that was on the bottom of the SAS drive. And I need to then now connect up the power connector and also I'm going to connect up the two fan headers that way it will power the fans on the front of the case but also it would then stop the alarm going off in this PCB board so let's get that done now. If we want to make a NAS machine, I mean, this isn't really going to cut it. You're just going to fit, what, one or two dry bays in here and, uh, and that's it. So we're going to have to find a way to increase the number of drives we can put in here to really max this out and uh, yeah, see how we, how we do that. So first, let's get this removed. put the base plate in that I 3D printed and I just screwed it in on the bottom of the case and you can basically use this to build a tower of hard drives as, as high as you like and yes uh, just ignore this screw here it's not I didn't take it out of a recycle bin it is a good screw and it's a budget build so it goes with the theme so yeah I'm keeping that in there Right, so let's uh, build the tower of hard drives and see how high we go. And then I decided actually it wasn't such a good idea. Let me do this properly. So I marked out where the holes were on that 3D printed base plate that I had 
and I drilled out holes for where all the screws were going to be and I will be using proper screws to screw that in on the bottom considering how many hard drives are going to be stacked inside this thing I really don't want them rattling around and being bashed about. These legs actually come with the 3D print file which I think was actually pretty smart in the way it was designed. It could have been a little bit thicker but I do understand why he decided to do it so thin and that was because of just print time and saving materials but essentially they just kind of snap together and then the holes line up and then you just put a screw through it and it just makes the whole job really easy and straightforward and in theory this is uh, stacked to infinity or until the whole thing collapses and keels over on itself either way it's fun to uh, build a tower of hard drives so let's get on with building that now Now that looks incredible, I love the way the power cables all loop onto each other, uh, daisy chain down all the hard drives, so that looks incredible. The only thing that makes this look even better and works on cars, planes, even a Hadron Collider is of course cable ties. And with cable ties it just gives it a whole other level of tidiness and it gives it a really cool look. So it just needs to be snipped and tidied up, slotted into the case and then screwed down. And that's it, pretty straightforward. Now I needed to attach the towering inferno of hard drives to the back of the PC case. So I used this nylon set and my daughter's paint kit to make that happen. And a really good tip here is aligning the top of the hole where I had the top of the hard drive stack and using the paint kit to mark out exactly where I wanted the hole um, in alignment with that hole on top of the stack drilling it out and then simply using those connectors, attaching them together and then screwing it in place so the top of the hard drive stack actually has some support. So I didn't actually have enough SATA ports on my motherboard but you can get this adapter off Amazon for around about £15 and it will give you additional six SATA ports expanding your hard drive capacity. It slots in there quite nicely and you simply just connect the SATA ports to that and then you have six extra drives you can fit into your uh, PC. So I decided to use that for the hard drive caddy or hot swap wall bay that I've got on top of the case. So installing TrueNAS is really simple. You just download it off their website, flash it onto a USB stick and then it will go through the installation process. Just make sure you choose to boot up from the USB stick. It would run through the installation and then at the end it would then give you an IP address. You would then enter that IP address in your laptop uh, on your web browser and that would then allow you to access the TrueNAS homepage and from there you can then start configuring your drives whether you want them in RAID setup or direct mirroring or however you feel best with setting up your drives. Then finally map it to your laptop and there you go. So doing a full tutorial on how to set up TrueNAS is really out of the scope of this video. But if you'd like me to do one, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to put one together for you. So what's my key takeaway from this video? Well, I think the main thing is really look at the hardware that you may have laying around that is not doing anything at all and find ways of making it productive. You know, you can make a NAS drive that will be useful for somebody instead of paying subscription fees to Google Drive or Windows or you have to pay monthly fee for your storage allocation. At least this way you have full control of your storage and you've done it yourself by upcycling old bits of hardware that otherwise would end up in landfill. So I think this is a really good way to reuse some old hardware and old equipment. And if anything, if you don't even need a NAS drive, why don't you build it and sell it for somebody else to use that does need one? Or even you can turn this into a cheer miner. Now with cheer mining, you can just have a very simple CPU, some RAM, and the main thing you do need is a lot of drives. Um, 10 terabytes isn't a huge amount but you will still make a little bit of money off that. Yes, it will probably consume 
quite a bit of electricity if you've only got 10 terabytes but again add in an 18 terabyte drive if you so wish to do so and that would increase its probability over time and with that i just want to say thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one